Hello, let's see how the sixth challenge from 2019 flare on competition could be solved. Uh, we'll start with uh, analyzing the files that we uh, get in this challenge. Uh, so we, we are getting three files. One is message as usual, and the two others are image BMP, which is well, maybe quite large, but not that large as for the BMP format, and BMP height.exe. Uh, and let's see what we have in the message. So message says Tyler Dean hike up in Mount Albert at 2 a.m. to capture this picture at the perfect time. Never skip leg day. We found this picture and executable on a thumb drive he left at the trail head. Can he be trusted? And the image is actually, yeah, some mountain. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the mentioned mountain, but uh, we assume yes. Uh, okay, so how can we start with this challenge? Uh, first, I guess we can uh, analyze uh, what uh, kind of file it is. And I already have it uh, checked with a file. So it says that it's a mono.net assembly. So we'll be working with uh, the NSPY. Uh, in this uh, video. Okay, uh, so let's uh, open the NSPY uh, and how we could approach that. Well, we could start analyzing um, randomly, but I guess the best place could be to actually start with the entry point. So we can go uh, to entry point in the NSPY and we can see some of the um, methods being uh, executed here and can see some programming needs, some uh, uh, increment of some variable we don't know what is it for yet or if it even useful uh, then we get uh, arc2 so it would be the third argument from uh, the arguments that are being passed to this uh, program and saving to file name which is used then later here then we take the first and the second we get the paths for those files and from the second one we read all bytes and uh, put it in the data then we pass the first file name uh, into the bitmap. So we'll load the first fi file as a bitmap. Then we'll uh, run the data through some program.h function. And then we'll pass the bitmap and the transform data. Well, I I'm assuming it's transformed somehow to the uh, program.i method. Okay, and from that and from, I, I guess, having an image and knowing such challenges, we can assume that uh, the data that we uh, provide in the second uh, argument to this program will be uh, hidden in the image. So it's some kind of uh, steganography type of challenge. And usually they are quite uh, boring uh, because usually it makes, like if, if you encounter those, you need to either find out the, what was the tool used or somehow find out how it was uh, coded in this image. But here we have an application. So uh, we are assuming that BMP height actually is used for hiding this data in the image. So maybe it will be uh, quite interesting. Uh, okay, so we know that we assume that it will be hidden. So somehow we need to extract this data from uh, the image. So in order to do that, we need to analyze how it's being hidden in the, in the program. So let's maybe uh, go through uh, at least some of the uh, functions. So in program init, we actually uh, do some kind of more initialization. Then we do, uh, we get some, uh, all the methods uh, from this uh, type A, which is this one. And we call runtime helper, helpers dot prepare method. Then we call some method that, uh, well, it's supposed to calculate some stack. We don't know what actually it's doing. And then for, uh, again, we go through all the methods in the program. So this class uh, currently, we get the method. Well, we check if there is a body of the method. There might not be. Then we get the method body. We get the uh, yield code as byte array. We check if it's like bigger method, not some short one. And then we copy the data to, to this array two. And then we create a new class D, which is here, and we call method A on that type, passing our array with some, so basically we are passing the ill code here of a given method. And then we do some checks. Uh, we calculate some number and we do some checks. So basically we check if the number is this, 
and if it is then we assigned uh, the the method info uh, so which is like here so it's like a information about the method to m if it's if number is some other number then we assign to m2 if it's even different number than to m3 and to a different number to m4 and at the end of this method we call something that's actually well named verify signature with m m2 m3 m4 but if we go inside it actually doesn't verify anything it's again calls this runtime helper prepare method and they actually to make sure that the method is compiled so it's not uh, so it's jitted actually and then we get the pointer to the method to method one and method two and we actually assign the value of the pointer that points to method two to the pointer that should point to method one so we actually in the runtime will um, change the behavior of method that m1 points to it will actually execute this uh, what m2 points to so it's actually in the dead listing we will see uh, that m1 is being called like for example i don't know but let's uh, say like j will be called but actually it will be some different method which uh, has to have the same signature so maybe it's not the j but maybe those two we don't know which one we'll find out in a moment but at least this is some kind of uh, tricky uh, function substitution in the runtime so the dead listing will uh, fool us if we only uh, assume uh, what we see in the dn spy okay so maybe maybe we could actually see what methods are being exchanged or not exchange is a word wrong word because we are not exchanging we are assigning m2 to m and m4 to m3 but we could uh, try to see so let's try to put a breakpoint here and actually run this application but yeah it's not that easy we are getting some exceptions stack overflow exception I guess it's intentional uh, so people will not debug and find out uh, what the actual method are and we can see yeah there's for sure some kind of uh, recursive calls here in uh, increment stacks and C uh, so we need to somehow prevent that um, that uh, calls and we can see that the first call is from the init method so let's go to the init method and it's increment max stack uh, and it should be somewhere I don't know why we don't see it but it's sh it actually originates from calculate stack this is identify locals and in the identify locals there should be somewhere um, should be somewhere a call to to actually uh, this increment max stack but we can actually verify that if we go uh, if we put a breakpoint here we should be able to go that far yes and now we can uh, step into so let's let's use the buttons here we can actually go over those methods and if we go to identify locals it's actually some assigning some uh, uh, names of the jitter so it's like core jit uh, somewhere and, and here is the other uh, like ms core uh, jit and then we will load that uh, as with load library and we'll get the jitter so actually we'll uh, yeah get the instance of the jitter uh, so we actually can do all those magics that we are doing here so let's just go a little bit more where do we actually call this uh, method because it looks like it, it is not called here so maybe I was maybe I was wrong maybe i was wrong maybe it's just somewhere here but maybe if it doesn't being called and we actually uh, went through without any issues so maybe let's put a breakpoint here and let's see if we can break no so actually we are still being caught with this exception uh, and again it is actually originating from from program init so what i will do I'm pretty sure this is the method so I will what I will do I will actually modify uh, this method uh, edit method I will comment out the calculate uh, stack we'll uh, get later to that I will compile that it, it did compile so let me just uh, save now 
uh, and let's call it BMP height uh, no stack. Okay, but still in this one it will still remember that it's there. So let's just open our new. As you can see, you already have multiple of those. Uh, let's open the new one, uh, new instance, and let's just go to the init. And in here, we'll not have this uh, stack, so we should be able to reach our point. Yeah, okay. So we reach our point, and uh, this is where this magic, at least one of the magic, happens. So let's see what's M. Let's actually see what method is, is uh, M. And we have like a declaring type is program, full name is BMP height program, and the method full name is A. So actually, the M is actually A. So let's see what's M2. M2 is B. So actually, whenever in the dead listing we'll see A, it will actually be B that will be executed. So let's just put that in our notes. So uh, B instead of A. Maybe it should be like uh, program dot B instead of program dot A. So this is our notes, uh, just to remember what was the method being exchanged. And so this is already done. And let's see what's M3. M3 is C and D. So actually we have uh, so B instead of A and D instead of C. Uh, so this is like a, a tricky. Uh, tricky thing. So actually, as I said, in that listing, we'll see A, so this function, but in fact, we'll be doing this one. Okay, so this is this is one uh, trick that being used here, uh, but there's another one. So there's another one that actually uh, also tricky. So let me uh, try to find where's the other one. So for sure, it's not in init. I guess it was supposed to be in the method that I removed. So let me just close this one and go again to here. Ah, okay, I won't have it here. If I reload it, it should be... Can I just reload? Okay, I will just delete this one and add again. Now, ah, there was a reload function from the menu. But anyway, uh, if I reload it and let's see in the int again, Calculate stack. I think in this identify local we have one more uh, trick that being done. Uh, or maybe it's not here. It looks it's not here. Oh, it's it's here. It's increment in this increment max stack. So again, here we have some uh, strange things that we check some me metadata token and actually, uh, well, it doesn't really tell you uh, that much from, from this value because uh, the tokens in DNSpy are written in hex. So actually it doesn't say that much what uh, method is actually being checked here or here. Uh, but yeah, this is also a bit, I guess, of experience. If you see virtual protect and write byte, something uh, fishy is going on and something uh, in the runtime, I guess, uh, being modified. And this is what's actually happening here. Uh, so let's try and see if we actually can reach this point because we, we were getting exception here before. Maybe if I like break here, it will be possible. Uh, so, okay, let's try to run this. If not, I will explain uh, what's going on here because this as you can see this is like a recursive call uh, yeah and we got the stack exception okay so I will just explain without actually reaching uh, that uh, and we will also find out how to find out what was the method because actually here I don't think we can switch to use hex decimal of course we could use like calculator to find out the value what's actually the hex value but we can also switch to il and in il, we can see here what the hex value. So this is like, uh, and it's like a little endian. So it's like, uh, oh, actually it's, uh, about, I think it's big endian. So it's 600015. And we can actually find out what is the method. So it's h. 
uh, that's the method we will identify, at least in the first if. And so actually, okay, so we know that. So the first if is for this H method, but what is actually happening here? So we are unprotecting the, the ill code, so actually the, the bytes that defines the code of the method, and we will write some bytes. So actually, if we check the write byte, the first value is the offset, and the second value, I'm sorry, the second is the offset, and the third is a value that will be writing, and the first, of course, is an array. So in those two lines, we will, at the offset 23, we'll write 20, and at the offset 62, we'll also write 20. Okay, but what are those values? So we already know that this is H method, so let's go and see the H method. And we see the C sharp code. And we already see this A that we discussed before. So actually here it will be B. It won't be A and it won't be C. It will be B and D that we will be uh, calling here. So as I said, that listing will fool us uh, if we didn't know that this trick is being uh, used here. But it looks like it's not only that that being in this method is being uh, changed. So how we can do it? So we can again switch to ill and with ill we have an offset. So first was 23 and of course we have those offsets uh, here with hex. So 23 will be what? It will be, uh, actually we don't need to convert that because we can also go uh, to this method. We can also switch to ill and we will see the values. So 23, 17, 20 value is 14. Okay, that's uh, good. So, okay. We go back to our method H. We try to locate 17. Okay, but it's not here. Well, actually, it's, it is here because 16 is the beginning of this method. So this will be the byte. So instead of 13, we'll have 14 here. So again, it will be will not be calling method F because those bytes are actually defining the method token. So the method which will be called. So it won't be F. It will be some method that has a token ending with 14, which is G. So again, this is another trick that's supposed to fool us. If we only read the dead listing in here, we will see, okay, we are actually calling the F method here, and I guess here, but we are actually calling G. So again, dead listing, not good. We need to know that those tricks are being used here to actually find out uh, correctly how it's being um, uh, yeah, done to encrypt and, and hide the data. Uh, so that was uh, one uh, place. So that was the uh, offset 17. And also there was like uh, another one and it will be uh, here also the same. So we'll exchange those 20s, um, uh, those 20s uh here we'll write them so we'll f will become g but there was another change that being actually done here and here it, it's different metadata token than this one so it's different method uh we can see it's uh, one less so actually if that was method h we already know what this will be and here at offset 6 and 18 decimal we'll write some uh different values and again, we could look in uh, at ill uh, to actually know what those values are. And we have some hexadecimal value here, some hexadecimal value here, and we have offsets uh, 18. And uh, I guess this is 1C. No, that's like 1C, it's the opcode, but it's 6. Okay, because it's 6 has a, like a special opcode already. We don't have to specify the value like, like here. Uh, okay, and if we know that it's method G, so let's look actually at method G, what's being done here. And we can already uh, see that probably those are the uh, values that we need, that will be modified at random. So again, that listing will show us, okay, those are the values that are being used uh, if you uh, use this method, but actually this, those are not. We need to change at offset 6, yes, so this value and 
like offset here, uh, I guess uh, it's like 12, uh, this value we need to change. So those two tricks are being used here uh, to fool us into believing that something else is going on instead of what actually is being executed. Uh, so one would be that uh, instead of when we see A, B is executed, the second one would be, uh, yeah, C. Uh, when, when we see function C, it's actually D. And the other one is actually values uh, that being used uh, in method H. So here it uh, will be G instead of F. And in G itself, the indexes of like those offsets, I guess it's like an offset or something. Uh, I'm not sure how to call it, but those values will be different than the actual ones that we see in the dead listing. Okay, uh, so we know that, but okay, so how the data is uh, transformed. And this is the actual, uh, the actual code. So the data we read from the file, uh, for each byte we do some modifications. We already know that the methods are a bit different, but now we try to understand the overall. And then we uh, assigned um, output values to the array, and then we return. And this F method is actually uh, quite, maybe not complex, but it has a lot of code. So first we initialize some array, uh, that's quite long. And yeah, okay, so maybe it's not that big, but here we have, um, based on the number, we calculate a new index. And then we, based on this array, we return a value. So it's some kind of shuffling algorithm. Uh, I didn't spend much time to actually analyzing this, uh, as I will show you in a moment. I just, uh, yeah, copied it uh, one by one. Uh, so this is used uh, twice. We get a number, then uh, we pass to this method E, which actually, uh, yeah, does some bit modifications on the value. Like for each bit, it looks like that. Uh, we will get the flag, and based on the flag, uh, yeah, the B will be the old B, and uh, yeah, some some modif. So this is like a, it looks like this will um, assign um, uh, one transform. Yeah, okay, doesn't matter really, but this is some kind of bit modification uh, being done. I think if we, if we analyze this closely, this is like a uh, roll, uh, so rotate left or, uh, yeah, it sounds like rotate uh, left uh, because we are uh, adding uh, new bytes uh, to the, uh, from, from right. Uh, but it doesn't matter right now. And uh, it shouldn't be A, but it should be B. And B is actually rotate uh, right. Yeah, because we are like dividing uh, by, um, by, or maybe the other way around. So we get the byte from the top and then we, okay. So this is rotate left and the other one is rotate right. Okay. That's uh thing correct. So we do some uh, rotations on this data and we, uh, store it in the array. So this is how the data is being, uh, encrypted but how is it encoded into the bitmap but that's because that's a different uh, question because we now we have the data that's being uh, a bit um, encrypted but we still don't know how the 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 bytes of this uh, data are being stored in the bitmap which is done in this i method because it takes bitmap and this um, new transform data and here we have some calls to the method j with some uh, values like uh, 103 or 27 and actually we could run the program with uh, bitmap and the data and the output and we will uh, we could get those values because those are constants they are not changed from run to run and well uh, I won't be doing that but uh, when I was like analyzing this during the competition uh, you could run and of course this is like return zero as you can imagine we are going from zero to the width of the bitmap, the same here for the height, uh, and some other values can also be um, extracted from that. And the most important ones are here. 
because this is uh, here how the data is being uh, encoded. So uh, we take the pixel and we actually modify it uh, by exchanging the actual uh, color uh, bits with some bits of our um, of our byte that we are actually trying to uh, encode on that uh, specific pixel. And I already know from, as I said, you could run this and this will give uh, seven because we need to uh, take the, uh, the free, uh, actually two lowest, no, the three lowest bits. Um, and this also will give us three lowest bit and this will return to. So in total, it will give us eight bits that we can use. And this is actually what we need to store a byte. So on those three colors, red, green, and blue, we will store three, three, and two uh, bits. And here is just to uh, shift uh, the data. So uh, I think this will return like uh, six. This will return, uh, uh, no, this will return four and this will return six, but nonetheless, it, it doesn't matter. It's just like it will return some values that actually uh, helps to extract the specific parts of the uh, data that we try to store on the specific byte. And we'll actually see in a moment from the, um, from the script uh, what was the values and we'll get back to it. And then we increase this will return one. We set the pixel first. So actually this is how it's being done. So we have two step process. First, we encrypt the data with some uh, function uh, with rotate left and rotate right with seven and three. Uh, and then we store it in the bitmap. Uh, we store it in the bitmap by using uh, three bits from uh, right, uh, not right, uh, red channel three bits from green and two from blue. So in order to extract message, we need to do the reverse. We need to get those bits, uh, concatenate them to get a byte, and then reverse this H method to actually uh, get the value. And uh, since I already spoiled, uh, this is rotate left and rotate right, we actually can reverse them uh, because it will be just reverse operation. So if it's uh, rotate left, we'll use rotate right. And if it's rotate right, we'll use rotate left. And this is actually what I did. <clears throat> so uh, let's just see at the solution for a moment. So we load the, the file that we need to, uh, or that we want to uh, decode. Uh, we yeah convert to RGB then we get the data from those bits. So as I said, uh, we get seven, like we end with seven, the uh, red channel. So, so only gets the three lowest bits, the same with green. Uh, and with the um, blue, we only care about two bits. So we end it with uh, value three. And then we concatenate. Uh, so uh, like uh, shift by six, shift by three and add the red ones to actually get a value uh, and we add it to the to this array of uh, that we store all the bytes. So after this step, we have all the data extracted, but it's still encrypted. So we uh, can't read anything, but I nonetheless uh, save it to the this result that and then I have some code that actually implements roll and rotate right. So left and right. It's actually, uh, we need to do it because we need to be uh, limited to 32 bits because that's like the value uh, that's being used. So we can't use, uh, like if we use shift in Python, it will, the number just will grow. We need to have this uh, rotation that bits actually, uh, yeah, go outside the range and then they come back uh, from the other side. Uh, so actually, yeah, it's not uh, max bits, it's, uh, it's eight. So it's not 32 bits, it's just one byte. So it's on one byte we rotate. Okay, and then, yeah, from the data that we uh, saved, so for each uh, byte, I will just print uh, some progress indicator and we call this G function that we actually uh, saw uh, in the dead listing. So here it's F, what we call G, of course, 
with the modified numbers. I will check. Uh, I will show you in a moment. Uh, we call them. We ident uh, increase the number, and yeah, we just get those values that we need. So k2 and k1, so like keys, and then uh, as I said, uh, like if we look at those functions, they will be uh, rotate left and rotate right. So we reverse them and call with this uh, three value and seven. So if we go again to the dead listing of this program, we have seven and three. So from uh, now we'll call with three and seven uh, in uh, reverse order. And we pass the data uh, that uh, was encrypted. And there was also XOR. So I can see I have, I'm XORing here. Was there XOR? So I guess the E uh, function, no, that's not XOR. Where is it being XOR? It should be somewhere being XOR here. Uh, okay, being, I'm missing XOR operation here. Uh, it cannot be in. Okay, so I'm not sure why I don't see the XOR operation here, but there was some, uh, maybe it's actually somewhere here that this XOR is being executed. Uh, no, it's actually not here. So let me just, okay, we have the data. This is num3, this is num3. Maybe it's actually it's being here no okay i missed this uh, i'm missing this one step somewhere here but i'm sure it's somewhere there so it's like a roll is xor with k1 and roll result is xor with k2 and we just append and we save the file hmm. okay so if this is xor so there should be something maybe this e is actually xor Ah, yeah. Okay, so this method, yeah. So this is actually XOR implementation bit by bit. So without using the without using the operator, XOR operator. So it's like going through all the bits. And yeah, if they are the same. Oh, yeah, here. If they are the same. So this will be true. We'll negate the, the bit. And if they are different, then we'll put a one there. Yeah, so actually E is XOR. So this is the the part that I was missing. So XOR is here and we are calling it twice here. Okay, so at least that's good. So yeah, of course we can use that. We don't need to implement the method. And let me just show you a little bit more with this, uh, where I have the G. So I have the same array as in uh, DNSpy. So it has the same values copied from DNSpy. We have an F method uh, and a G. So actually, uh, yeah, there was like, uh, I wasn't sure if, this is being used, so I have this method, but actually the G is being used and the constants here are different from the ones that are being used in DNSpy. Maybe let's just try to see them side by side. So if we look at G, uh, okay, and of course they are in decimal form, so let's just switch to EEL. Um, so this is one value, so it's nothing like that. And the other one is this one. And let's try to see the method that actually was uh, changing those values. Uh, let's just for a moment switch to uh, C sharp. Okay, let's just maybe calculate stack. I think it was identify locals. And where was it? Uh, mm -hmm. I think it was C. No, but it was C, but in A. Uh, or something like that. Yeah, so it was here. Uh, but it's not here. So no, uh, it was uh, one increment max stack. Okay. And here we have those values. So let's just quickly switch to yield and let's see if at least it uh, matches something so this is the first and this should be somewhere the second okay we have here so c55 okay so it's like c5 um, it's not enough space here let's just 
move the menu um, and again just I will switch to C sharp for a moment okay so this is the value and I can't see that in here uh, okay it's here 12 6b 6f c5 so this is the first one and the second one will be second one where are you can't see you which will protect i think it's two so this should be the second one let's see if it matches c 0 c 82 c 9 70 okay so that's the actual value so i use the same values as after uh yeah after it's being uh, changed oof okay so more or less that's explained the uh, the algorithm so we just do the stuff in reverse order and yeah so i have the uh the script is here we have uh, image bmp which is the original image and after the the we call it we should get results decoded uh, have it and yeah so already did some testing so we can uh, be sure it will work but yeah never be sure so we have solution python and image bmp i think that's the correct one we print the uh, size there are some like counter to see if the script is working and we are done and result decoded is created well it shows it like uh, some hex so it doesn't help as much as much but let's see what actually is here yeah i shouldn't open in notepad that was my mistake let's just use viewer and it says it's bm6 it has this bm6 uh, marker which indicates that this is another bmp file so let's just rename it to bmp okay well another picture but no flag hmm well but since it's bmp maybe it's actually the algorithm was called twice maybe when we run again on this file we'll get something interesting so let's see so we run it again but this time we uh, use results decoded bmp well something works it was faster because the file was smaller and we again got result decoded file so let's see what's in this file and ooh, it's another bmp file okay that's interesting at least we got something that might be useful we changed the extension okay already have that file because the file name is the same as the previous one and when we open it tada we have the flag don't trust verify at flare on dot com so that was it uh, that was quite an interesting challenge especially those two runtime modification that without identifying them it would be really tricky to solve at least i think it would be really tricky to solve this challenge uh, but nonetheless yeah uh, i managed to do it i yeah it was quite interesting to see those uh, modification done in the runtime and well yeah we got the flag so uh, next step is ahead of us and yeah so let me know if you like this and if something is uh, not clear or requires some additional explanation uh, just ask me in the comments i will try to provide as much info as possible and yeah i hope you like the video so like and subscribe and see you next time on the seventh challenge from flare on 2019 bye